Like, ooh. Ooh, I just pulled me bendy off. I wanted to talk about something which I think is really, 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 really important. And that is addressing, dealing with, coming to terms with, and overcoming the positivity police. <laughs> so the positivity police are those who are like, I'm all positive, I'm only positive, I, you know, I don't want any negativity, I'm just all positive and I just can't deal with any negativity. And if you coexist in the real word, avec moi, then you know that this is totally unrealistic and really actually soul destroying and the most unhelpful thing ever. And, oh, oh, I just pulled my bindi off. It's pulled off my bindi. Okay, good job, I've got another one here. Let's do this one. One must adorn one's third eye. Check out this one. How good is this one? I did actually post on my Instagram and my po I'll put my Instagram here. So should anyone want to follow me, where I post all updates and you know daily thoughts and all that kind of thing. When I'm not having one of my offline weeks, then I tend to post every single day and I'll post like my thoughts or whatever it is that I'm experiencing that day. Yesterday, I came across this meme or like this little thing on Instagram. It says this, imagine this. If you had $86,400 in your account and someone stole $10 from you, would you be upset and throw away all of the $86,390 away in the hopes of getting back at the person that took your $10? Or would you just move on and live? You'd move on and live. See, we have 86,400 seconds in each day. So why let somebody's negative 10 seconds ruin the rest of the 86,390 seconds? Don't sweat the small stuff. Life is bigger than that. I'm not 100% sure that I'm totally with this logic. However, I really like the idea behind it regardless. This is where I commented on what I like to call the positivity police. So the positivity police, <laughs> you know when you're like wanting to just not be all rainbows and butterflies and there's someone in the room who's just like, oh, you've got to stop being so negative. You know that person and you're sat there like, <laughs> just festering with fury. <laughs> She's being aggravated by this person. Watch out that you are not that person. And I only say that because if somebody's going through a tough time, the worst thing that you can do is come along and make them feel even worse for feeling negative. When somebody is going through a tough time, the last thing that they want to hear is that it's bad, that they feel negative. They already know they feel negative. This, this plane that we exist within does entertain both sides of the polarity of the duality, whatever you want to call it. Life is made up of positive and negative, male and female, light and dark. Everything is existing within this gray area in between but there does always exist this sort of duality the idea obviously is to overcome this duality eventually but until then we must accept and embrace each sides of the polarity of the light and dark good bad male female whatever it is has anyone noticed that it's always the most negative people who are always banging on about being positive the only way to avoid negativity is not to fixate on it or be avidly trying to escape it. Life is 50% negative and that doesn't have to be a bad thing. It also doesn't have to be something that you need to sort of cower from or run from in terror or fear. You know, sort of making a cross with your fingers like... <laughs> it just needs to be seen and accepted for what it is. In my experience, without exception it is the people who are 
so dead set on eliminating negativity from their life and only entertaining lovely things, who are the people, those same people, who tend to be the least positive and who just by their natural state of being tend to conjure up just endless streams of negativity or problems, you know, or are themselves <gasps> negative. You mustn't run from darkness. Because if we run from darkness, what we find is we just end up in deep pools of the stuff. We mustn't run from truth. We mustn't run from reality. You know, we end up in this false construct of rainbows and butterflies with our lives just reflecting just the stark opposite. I find that the way to avoid this is by practicing the only sort of meditation which I think is worth practicing in the beginning at least anyway which is where you are just drastically, painfully honest with yourself about yourself. And that is by sitting. I have my ticky clock in the background, which I really find helps me in my meditation. You set the intention for your meditation for, I want to know about myself. I would like an objective view about myself. How have I been? How do I behave? And after a little while, once you're sat there and you reach that, you know, that point where you're just following your breath in and out and you get to the point where the truth about whatever it is you're trying to get the truth about starts to come up and you start to see whether you've been nice whether you've been genuinely positive or whether you're just covering up for something very actually negative and whether you've been a shit <laughs> as I like to put it <laughs> how successful our attempts at meditation are come up in this moment I'd also say that if you really want to know how successful you've been with your meditation, it's just look at the rest of your behaviour. How patient are you? How tolerant are you? How understanding are you? How resistant are you to somebody else's very different ways of functioning? You just have to see yourself exactly as your being. And by trying to convince yourself that you are this, you know, pool of rainbows and light and wonderfulness, there's a good chance that actually you are missing the most beautiful part of yourself which is sometimes a scared or sort of childish side of you which is just calling out for attention and love but is being squashed down and choked out by this just never ending like we need negativity to go and we need endless positivity which just becomes psychotic it really does and i've seen the most potent example of it recently i've had to admit that that this girl is just one of the most negative negative people that i've ever come across and because she's unwilling to accept that she is that way she projects it onto everybody else around her i feel really sad about it because i love this girl but um, I find that people like that, they'll, they'll turn everybody possible into their enemy. They'll find issue with everything and everyone. And, and sometimes I think the kindest thing you can do is just accept, okay, if that's how you see me, then in your reality tunnel, that's how I am. And just hope that they'll find their way back in the end, you know? And I hope she does. I hope she does. As soon as I got off what I like to call the happy crack train, <laughs> I learned what it meant to be actually grounded, you know, actually in that place of real calmness, actually in a place of stillness. We must be willing to be in a place that is both happy and sad, positive and negative, up and down, all whilst not allowing these oscillations to knock that still centered calmness that stays within. That cool, calm center, which is quietly unshakable. And the cool, calm center that is fortified with each tribulation. I heard this wonderful quote, bad things do happen. How I respond to them defines my character and the quality of my life. I can choose to sit in perpetual sadness, immobilized by the gravity of my loss, or I can choose to rise from the pain and treasure the most precious gift that I have. 
life itself. Again, sorry I haven't posted. As I said, I have these like weeks where I just go offline. I'm like all the way out in meditation, studying, just not in the cyber world. And it just means that when I come back online and I come back to give you guys my time and my service and all this kind of stuff, then I'm bringing you the most helpful things for this particular time. And that does require me sort of, you know, monthly to just disappear and tune in to the energies and all that kind of thing. So that when I come back, I am going to bring the most effective and on point information. Write me a comment if you have any questions, if you have any feedback. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. I'd say probably actually my favourite part of making these videos is hearing your guys' feedback. Um, because so many of you are, I mean, fascinating, kind, wonderful people. It really motivates me to make more content when, you know, I'm, I'm interacting with you guys. I guess it's a shame when I feel that lots of YouTubers don't appreciate the wonderful um, you know, space that they hold open for communication with their viewers um, and so I do try to interact with you guys as much as possible. I'll be back in a few days. I love you guys so much as always. You know where to get me. I'm on my Instagram if you ever need anything. I try to get back to as many of you as possible as I said and we can chat there. I love you. Mm. Stay cool. <laughs>